traders, let's go over the correlation tracker feature uh, in Bookmap and uh, and how it works. So you'll find it first uh, underneath the API button here. So let's click on that and open it up. And uh, you'll add the correlation tracker here. Once you've added it, uh, select it here, and then you'll have access to the different settings. So first thing uh, is to uh, set up the correlation that you want. So um, we're, we're looking at the instrument here, the, uh, the NQ, okay, the uh, NASDAQ E-mini, uh, and uh, I've selected to correlate that instrument with the S&P E-mini, and uh, you also have a scaling option here. Uh, you can change the scaling by a multitude. Okay, we'll just keep it at one, and uh, we'll, we'll um, uh, se select the line color here as teal, okay, and then let's close that. And once you've done that, you'll see the uh, the correlated uh, instrument here, the teal line, uh, projected onto the uh, uh, NASDAQ E-mini chart here. Okay, so this represents the S&P. Now, how to use this? Let's take a look at the uh, uh, NASDAQ open here at 9.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And we can see the, uh, the correlation here between the two markets. And this is where we start to see a discrepancy in price. Uh, you'll have to determine uh, how you want to use this or trade this. Uh, if you want to, uh, there are many different ways. Uh, you can uh, trade the uh, the NASDAQ outright here, right from the chart in Bookmap, if you choose to do that. Or uh, maybe you want to jump over and take the trade uh, in the uh, S&P, if you see a discrepancy there. Uh, and um, or uh, you can trade both. Uh, you can uh, short the NASDAQ in uh, specific areas and buy the S&P in other areas and look for a return to the mean. It's really up to you. Uh, in this instance, uh, we're looking at a price movement and discrepancy here in the uh, NASDAQ E-mini uh, and then uh, to trade it in line with the way the S&P E-mini is behaving. So we see that discrepancy here. Look at the nice spike to the upside in the NASDAQ, a liquidity grab into some of these higher areas here, and look at the S&P. It's going flat. All right? It does not make that spike to the upside and break the structure here. Uh, it stays within its structure uh, and actually continues to the downside. Uh, it's at this point here, uh, you know there's a discrepancy. So uh, this allows many opportunities for entry. All right, so you can enter uh, short in some of these areas up here around this 54.26 uh, and trade it back down to the bottom of the range if that's what you want to do. Uh, or you can start to build a position uh, um, adding into uh, the discrepancy. We see another retest here around uh, uh, 54.25 and a quarter uh, and so forth. And all of these little areas here, right? And uh, that change uh, does not, uh, or is not reflected uh, in the S&P E-mini, okay? And uh, finally, uh, the, uh, the correlation uh, or the markets uh, come back into line here, and you can see what occurs. Uh, finally, the, uh, the NASDAQ E-mini catches up and, uh, and makes this uh, pretty dramatic move to the downside very, very quickly. Uh, and the S&P has already shown uh, its movement here to the downside before the NASDAQ has. So this is a, a great tool. I uh, hope you guys uh, find uh, lots of uses for it.